Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to another segment of the MCR Mac and me. My name's TJ. Two regular seasoned gentlemen from the state of Michigan. Just uh, giving our views, venting, and uh, providing thoughts and insight on various topics in this segment. And this is this is something that's I've been wanting to talk about for a few months, and ever, something else always seems to come up. But it's the topic of confidential informant. What is a confidential informant? Well, the I guess one of the definitions I found was a person who works undercover for law enforcement to gather information about felonious criminal activities. Some confidential informants are criminals themselves hired to work undercover in exchange for leniency or exoneration. Confidential informants have also been referred to, abbreviated as a, as a CI. So if, right. you ever he- if, if you ever hear a law enforcement or whoever say, yeah, he was a CI for us, you know, uh, aside from him being probably a snitch, you know, confidential informant. Okay, a couple of years ago, one of the more popular, more than one of the more well-known situations involving confidential informants here in Michigan was the whole Governor Whitmer thing. You know, over half that group were CIs. And and you, you got these CIs snaring up these, and I'm going to kind of refer to these as balls, for lack of a better term, who, you know, they get they get worked up into a frenzy, start shooting their mouth off, And now you got these CIs running back to the state police or whoever, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, I, from what I understand, over half the group was never charged. Why? Because they were CIs. And And, straight up FBI agents as well. Yeah. That, that trait, that case had entrapment written all over it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, well, the guys pled guilty. Well, probably pled guilty one they probably didn't know better you got to question the legal counsel they were being given by the well, state they probably you know and I, and I know someone who knows some of these people actually they're poor people they don't have good legal representation they're scared now because they're getting charged with a federal crime and so they just take the deal the years of legal wrangling which will probably bankrupt you oh and you, you know, know that michael franzese talks about this all the time Oh, and if you get yes. convicted, you're going to prison for 100 years. And p- part of the reason why I was compelled to bring this up, and I think we mentioned them once before a few years ago in a previous segment. I couldn't really tell you which one. This whole Patriot Front group. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, stay away from that group. That's yep. got CI written all over it. Well, we stay away from groups anyway. We had someone contact us in regard to joining such a group. And uh, when I tried to question them as to who they are, they wanted to have someone local meet us. And I said, boy, this this smells like a trap to me. And we we never did do it, of course, because it smelled like a trap to me. Well, you know, in, in regards to this Patriot Front group, you got the leadership of this Patriot Front total given t- a total pass. Meanwhile, you got a U-Haul box truck full of goofballs that uh get charged and uh and as far as patriot front leadership they're given a complete path back back in the 1990s i had certain affiliations and we were always worried about cis i would always say to the group do not break any laws we do not advocate breaking of any laws uh, we really encourage people because at that time, our county prosecutor, Carl Marlinga, was facilitating <clears throat> rather easily the uh, procurement of concealed carry permits here in Macomb County. So we would tell everyone, get a concealed carry permit because that helps you that helps you with some of the trickier gun laws, you know, right. and, <clears throat> you know. Someone might come to our group and we'd say, hey, do you have a do you have a concealed carry permit? If they said yes, we asked to see it. If they said yes and didn't produce it, we'd kind of say, mm, until you, you know, either you obey the law or or something, you know, we don't really want to associate with you. 
Okay. Right. And and I will tell you on one occasion, we did have a guy. He didn't have a concealed carry permit. We suspect he got in trouble with the law because it's so easy to get in trouble over the over gun laws. Sure. I'll I'll go into here in a bit, but we were so worried about this one guy. We basically said, hey, we're not comfortable with you. We're not comfortable with your presence. Please don't come around. We don't know what's going on with you. We suspected he had gotten in trouble, somehow tried to navigate himself into some kind of a CI situation, you know, and the problem is we never broke any laws. So, so he pretty much came up empty there, but the whole point is you've got to be careful. You've, you know, you'll have to do a little detective work for one thing, but in, in regards to the gun laws, it is so easy for honest law abiding citizens at the drop of a hat to become a felon. For yes, instance, and, and here's easy. an ex- here's an example. You have a father who has some guns, handguns, especially. He passes away. You have them. You know, if you don't uh, take that death certificate and get them registered into your name, however, the local ordinance states. But I'm an honest citizen. I don't break the law. Well, well, you are now. Yeah, let, let me jump in here for a second because I know it's going to happen in the comments section. You don't need it because of the Second Amendment. We deal in what is, not what should be. So let me just yeah, say and, and you know what? You're, you know, to, to that particular individual, you got to obey the law, man. You got to obey the law, whether you agree we, we with it or not. Under, we fully understand that the Second Amendment gives us our right to do that. However, that's not where we're at. <clears throat> uh and, 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 you know, like this, this has been, this has been something that's been gnawing at me for a few months now. And I thought, you know, this is as good a time as any to, to bring it up and talk about it. You know, well, uh, I did have someone, uh, contact me, on uh, I want to say it was Facebook. I can't remember exactly, but, uh, and it's been a few years and they wanted to sell me guns. And I said, man, hit the road, Jack. I said, I, I buy, if I buy a gun, I buy it from a, a, a known FFL in, in here in Michigan. So don't even, don't even try it. Yeah. If you're going to buy or sell, you need to know the other party. I have a couple times sold, uh, legally through, through, you know, uh, following the legal parameters of the transaction. Uh, but both of these individuals, uh, I knew personally, uh, for one way or another, whether through work or, or just knowing the person for 30 years, you know, uh, right. you sell the gun to the wrong person. See if you're not on the hook, if something bad happens, you well, know, and that's why I emphasize known FFL. And when I say known, let's say it was a private FFL. I want to see the FFL and I want to take a picture of it. Yeah. Well, and that's why. And if they don't like uh, that, then I, then I move on. Most of the group that I associated with, we all had concealed carry permits. And, you know, if someone wants to, you know, come with us because uh, we would we would uh, go out to private property where we could legally uh, train, we'll say. And but to get from point A to point B can be a little tricky with firearm laws, you know. Right. And and of course, we would have our concealed carry permits, which is really nice because that helps us. Uh, I've I've kind of referred to it almost as your get out of jail free card, you know, uh, right. but uh, we'd have someone come along and we'd say, whoa, 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 do you have a con- concealed carry permit? Well, no. And, and then they'd start making the Second Amendment argument. And we say, stop, stop. If you can't abide by the law, please do not. Please do. Please stay away. Please. Well, you and know, we'd their- to, to what I would say to anyone with that complaint is that. The J6ers had every right to protest, yet they're still, they're still in jail. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, of course, uh, and I'm thinking back in one particular situation, there were hurt feelings and sorry, guy, get a concealed carry permit or sorry, guy, transport it legally. Sorry, guy, follow the law because we're not going to we're not going to go to jail with you, you know? Uh, well, we do. And, you know, the Democrats love guilt by association, so. Oh, big time, big time. And, 
I'm sure there's going to be the detractors out there to the segment saying, uh, uh, we're not true Patriots. All right. Yeah. Get bent. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Uh, just, uh, and for those who give a care, man, just please be careful. Please be careful. Know who you're associating with and don't break any laws. Just, I mean, they're, I mean, the liberals are just looking for a reason to lock you up, you know? Right. And yeah, you got the old lady in, in jail for three years because she dared to enter through the Capitol doors. That's all. I, that's all I got. Any, any, any final thoughts or comments? No, I, I think, uh, I think it's sound advice to be careful who you associate with, you know, and I'm going to reference CIs. They're not worried about if there's, you know, if they're a CI, you think they're going to worry about whether they're doing something legally or illegally? They got the right. feds on their side. CI breaking the law and said, well, he's breaking the well, law. I guess I will. Granted immunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just just be careful. Just be careful out there, okay? And uh, we'll, we'll call this one a wrap. As always, be safe. Watch your six. And don't tread on me.